Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we continue our RipeWave Audio series on home theater amplifiers 2022, and we're covering one brand at a time, and this time it's IOTA VX. This is the fourth in our series, and we started with Monolith series by Monoprice, and then we started the trilogy of products that have shared technology, and that was with Emotiva in Video 2, and then it was Tone Winner with Video 3, and this is our fourth video, which is IOTA VX. And of course, we covered IOTA with their 17-channel processor, the AVX17, and so it will be neat to see what they pair with that processor with their own amplifiers. But they only have two models, so this portfolio is very simple. It is the smallest portfolio we've covered to date. And the first one, the SA3, is really marketed as a stereo two-channel amplifier, not bulked in with their home theater section. But since there's only one model, let's, let's cover it anyways. And uh, while we go through this, we're also going to do some comparisons with Tone Winner and Emotiva to see what things are the same and what things might be different. So let's take a look at the first model, which is the PA3. And of course, we're baffled again about uh, model numbers that have uh, a count that's different than, than the channels. This is a two-channel amplifier, and the product's called the PA3. And the best we can make sense of that is perhaps they're talking about it being bridgeable into a, a mono-channel mono amplifier, and they're the two uh, for one use case and the third channel for, I, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> trying to make sense of it. But anyhow, this brings you two channels at 45 watts, and the input is unbalanced only on this, and it sells for $374. Uh, it's a little unclear when this first introduced to market, though we see activity back to 2019 on this model. And opening it up, uh, we look at this. Now, this has a different layout than the Tone Winner and Emotivo units that we've seen but it does have a, to a toroidal power supply, which we also see in entry-level models from those other brands. And now we'll take a look at the what they consider a true home theater amplifier because it has seven channels. And the other addition that this has is it supports balanced connections as well as unbalanced, which is uh, determined by a switch to, to see if you're gonna be using uh, which type of source. But the layout here is similar as we've seen on other products where you, you've got these stacked uh, uh, horizontally next to each other. And uh, this is giving out seven channels and to 110 watts. And uh, we'll explain those numbers a little bit further along of how that was measured. Uh, this is probably the more conservative side of the, the measurements. This unit sells for $1,436. And this is known as the AVX P1. Looking inside this model, we see a, a modular type of array that we've seen in Tone Winner and Emotiva before. And of course, uh, there is a power section in the front here, and it's a little unclear by the the, uh, the front on view. So we have this side view here that does reveal that this is using a toroidal power supply and not the switch mode power supply as we're starting to see introduce into Tone Winner as well as Emotiva with their Gen 3 amplifiers. Now looking at these kind of side by side, the IOTA VX with Emotiva and Tone Winner for the closest match models and I'll to be you know clear here, there wasn't an exact match on, on these. We believe that IOTA VX, uh, while it may be sharing technology that it gets uh, from the other brands, uh, it, it isn't too evident you know, from the, the first, the way they cosmetically look in the front. These are all quite different uh, 
brand language uh, for the for the front of these, but also if we are to flip them around, you know the layouts um, can can be can be different here, and uh, you know we do see a little bit of sim similarity with the uh, seven channel model. Uh, it looks to re, you know be close to the XPA uh, layout of the Emotiva here, and uh, somewhat the 7300 PA. Uh, of course, the 7100 PA doesn't have the uh, balance connections, so that one's definitely different there. And the the uh, of course the basics is is different as well. And in the Tone Winner series, we really don't have a two-channel amplifier to marry up with the PA3 from IOTA VX. But of course the the basics A2 does uh, somewhat match. Now, looking inside these units, we're trying to see if there's other similarities as far as you know the components inside. And here we can see that the the two channel and five channel models, yeah, they're the same as fact that they're using toroidal power supplies. But uh, you know, quick inspection, you know, it, it's hard to tell just from these photos how similar they are. Uh, but when we go into the seven channel models, the Tone Winner AD 7100, the 7300 from that, uh, the IOTA VX, you know, seems to match as well as with the Emotiva XPA Gen 3. So, uh, you know, I think the difference is whether it uses a toroidal power supply or a switch mode power supply for the most part. Uh, of course, the XPA7 is switch mode. The, uh, the AD7300PA uh, version 2, and it, the, the audience that we have for this channel was quick to point out that the V2 um, uh, version of this from Tone Winner did move to switch mode power supplies. And I had a, a a slide, at least one slide there, that didn't have that correct. Uh, and so here's our chance to correct that data with this comparison. So that that is switch mode on the Tone Winner 7300 PA version 2. Uh, the 7100 PA, I believe, is still a toroidal as well as the IOTA VX. So uh, not all these models have switched over to uh, to the switch mode power supply. So this gives you some glints in here. You know, I think that there is some sharing with these modular designs inside. Um, how extensive that sharing is, is um, not, we haven't gone that deep into the analysis. And, you know, the other unique thing is the um, Tone Winner 7300 has those big fins on the, the side, which is, was different. So they do have, different approaches to their thermal sections. Now, when we go in and take a look at the specifications over three slides here, uh, you know, this kind of reveals a little bit further, you know, which ones support balance and, and, and which ones don't. So we only have balance connections on the IOTA VX AVXP1. That gives you seven balance connection. So does the XPA7 from Emotiva and the AD7300PA V2 from Tone Winner. So those three models uh, in this grouping, of course, this isn't the full portfolio of Emotiva or Tone Winner, but these are the ones that most closely resemble the IOTA VX there. Uh, and, you know, I think the IOTA VX does kind of fall in between certain models of Emotiva and, and Tone Winner. So there isn't that exact match as, as we had said. So like Tone Winner doesn't have a two channel um, a model there. So that isn't a fair comparison. But the basics from Emotiva and the PA3, uh, you know, that that is pretty close. But I, I got to seem to believe there's a misprint on the sensitivity it is awfully low. So they, they advertise a 200 millivolt or 0.2 volt input sensitivity. 
and the emotive is 1.2 volts uh, for the basics, uh, and the tone winner is around 1.5. So was that a misprint and it's really 1.2 volts? That would make uh, more sense to us, but uh, uh, we have to print what, uh, what IOTA VX uh, has, has on their literature uh, and, unless corrected. So um, the cost points here, they're all hovering between, oh, $100 and $100 for the, 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 uh, a channel for the Basics A7. That's got to be the most affordable unit uh, up to the Emotiva XPA7, which is $314 per channel. On, on that. So if you're trying to keep cost per channel down, you can take a look at this table to see you know, how this falls. But IOTA VX is trying to be on the affordable side, uh, as well as a lot of these other models as well. You know, it, you know, if you get into some of the more premium models from Emotiva and, and, and others, you, know, you could be spending over $1,000 per channel. So these these are on the affordable side. They're all class AB amplifiers in this case. And, you know, none of them, what we can tell, are fully balanced. You know, they do talk about this dual balance um, in nature, but as the, you know, there isn't something that says it is end to end balanced uh, for the internal circuitry like some of the upper models from Tone Winner and Emotiva. So I don't think they're doing any of that. IOTA V XPA3, they don't have a lot on their specifications of, in general from IOTA VX. Uh, they don't specify the gain. You know, the, the AVXP1 is a 29 dB gain. So that's similar to the other models from Emotiva and Tone Winner. Now looking at the next chart, uh, we see that IOTA VX is a little more modest on their power output, particularly the PA3 is only 45 watts into 8 ohms and 70 watts into 4 ohms. And when you compare that to the Basics A2, which is rated at 160 watts into 8 ohms and 250 watts into 4 ohms, uh, you know, you're certainly not at the... Uh, the same, the same uh, level of output, and they both are measured 20 to 20,000 hertz. The THD that they measure it at is relatively close, 0.1% um, emotiva, 0.07% uh, with the IOTA VX. So that isn't going to make up that many of watts uh, just from that small difference there. The signal to noise ratio is. Uh, uh, reported better with Emotiva at 112 dBs versus 100 dB from IOTA VX on the two-channel model. You do pay a little bit more from the Emotiva. So instead of $187 a channel, it's $225. So those two-channel comparisons are, uh, you know, a good place to look here. Uh, the seven-channel model from IOTA VX. You know, this, this gives out 110 watts into 8 ohms and 170 watts into 4 ohm. But this appears to be measured, and it's not quite clear, but I take it to be a 1 kilohertz uh, measurement at 0.06% THD uh, for these, these ratings. So at 110 watts into 8 ohms, it is quite comparable to the Basics A7 um, as, as its output ratings, although it's a little, little stronger on the IOTA VX, AVXP1. So this is a grade up, but you're also paying more for the unit. So this, you know, being a $1,400 unit or a little bit more than that versus $700 unit for the A7. So you would expect a little stronger output, uh, and, uh, for this, and you're getting balanced, uh, inputs. With the with the AVXP1 versus the A7, so, but if you were to jump up to the the XPA series from Emotiva, their Gen 3, um, there you get the balance of inputs. You're getting a, you're getting now up to 200 watts per channel, all channels driven, 
uh, for for that emotiva. So a lot stronger on the on the amplifiers, but you're also paying a lot more. That brings you up to twenty two hundred dollars, or three hundred and fourteen dollars per channel, uh, giving you that stronger output, the stronger single in noise at one hundred and fifteen dB versus one hundred and ten. And then when you look at the two tone winner models, you know, they're uh, 107 watts and 180 watts per channel respectively. So that 7300 PA V2 is more in line with the XPA7 from Emotiva than it is with the IV IOTA VX. Uh, so I would say the 8700 PA is closer in design to the AV1PX, although it doesn't have balanced outputs, uh, it, but it is close on its output wattage there and and how it's measured. So, you know, th there is, you know, some, some comparison. These are kind of all in the same ballpark, if you will, but you do jump up in quality uh, when the upper end models from Emotiva and Tone Winner, I would say, is putting out a little something, a little bit something more than the AVXP1 from IOTA VX. And then finally, the um, the height and weights and power specifications uh, for the for the input power. Obviously, the PA3 is that really slim amp amplifier. It's it's 2.3 inches or 59 millimeters in height. You know, this is standard 17 inch widths on most of these products. Uh, the depth of only 9.5 inches on the PA3, and it's relatively light at 14.3 pounds, 6.5 kilograms. It is the lightest of this whole comparison. So the uh, let's jump then over to the AVXP1 from IOTA VX and we see that this is similarly sized for from Emotiva and, and Tone Winner units. Uh, Weight-wise, this is at 66.8 pounds or 30.3 kilograms. And of course, we said this has the toroidal power supply. So this, you can see the weight is similar to what we get with the Tone Winner AD7100 PA. That's 69 pounds, 31.3 pounds. Those do add a lot more weight than the switch mode power supplies that we see in the Emotiva XPA and the Tone Winner 7300 V2. So those, those power supplies are, are, are a, a lot more, um, a lot lighter, a lot lighter. So that's that class H topology. And so those are similar uh, between all of these. So the other consistents, they all have a removable power connector. They're all supporting international voltage ranges from you know 120 volts, 240 volts. The way that switches though is different. The PA3 is the only model here that you actually manually move a switch to switch between 120 volts and 240 volts, and the all the other models are auto switching. It's not a big deal, but you've got to remember to set it to the right thing. Uh, and as we said, the there's there's three models here that have switch mode power supplies. Consumption now, I can believe that the IOTA VX PA3 is 220 watts because it's not putting a lot of output out, and it's only two channels driven. The specification given for the IOTA VX AVXP1 of 110 watts maximum peak seems really low for a seven channel amplifier. Now, and the fact that this is toroidal power supply and not just switch modes. So uh, I think there might be an error there. Did that, yeah, I think, I think they're, are they talking about maximum usage per module times seven, that would make more sense. So maybe multiply 110 by, by seven there. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. So that would be uh, 770 watts. To me, that would be more believable. So that wraps it up for IOTA VX. Not a lot to 
to cover there. You know, what do you think about the comparisons between these three brands that share technology, uh, Emotiva, Tone Winner, and IOTA VX? You know, would you consider any of these? Or are you looking for more prestigious brands, you know, go about things uh, not necessarily as, as, as bringing a high value, but really focus on high quality in, in, the, in the red. Now, we're not just going, we're going to eventually cover those higher end models, but, um, you know, we're also going to cover in some things that uh, come out from traditional uh, suppliers and, and complement their AV processors and their receivers. So more to come. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Consider being a Patreon. Uh, you can you know, connect to that and that would be much appreciated. Uh, help, help me along here as, as we try to bring quality content to you. And be sure to hit the bell icon so you will be informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.